So let's talk about acclimating our cuttings to less humidity. But first, hit the like button, subscribe, and check out the website below. Let's go. So I get questions usually around this type of year asking, how do I acclimate my cuttings? How do I take them from an environment that's got close to 100% humidity and then bring them out of that tote or frame or whatever it is into an environment that's maybe 30 or 40 or 50% humidity? Every time I do that, the leaves wilt and they die. Well, here's how you're going to do it. So if you have your cuttings in some type of a plastic tote, and I know a lot of you are doing that, then really all you need to do, once you know those cuttings are fully rooted and you've got roots coming out to the edge of the little pot you've got them in, or you know that you've at least got a couple inches of root so that they're going to be able to absorb nutrients and water through those roots and thrive. At that point, you just take the lid of that tote and just turn it sideways just a little bit just enough to allow a little bit of airflow in one side or one corner and out the other corner. That could mean turning it a half inch, a quarter of an inch, an inch, two inches. It really depends on the plant that you're rooting, the cuttings, how far along in the season you are, how well rooted they are. There's a lot of variables, but if you're worried at all about it, just crack it just a hair, just maybe a quarter of an inch at first for the first day you can do this slowly there's no real time requirement it doesn't have to happen over two days what you can do is just crack it a little bit more each day over two weeks if you want to and very slowly acclimate them now if you're using the soda bottle method like i showed on a lot of the roses all you need to do is lift that soda bottle just a little bit and put something underneath it so that it braces it up, maybe a quarter of an inch or a half an inch and get a little bit of airflow going under. Now, you've got a cap on that soda bottle so you can take that cap off so you can allow more airflow or if you're trying to slow this process down more, leave the cap on and just allow the air to exchange underneath. At some point, you'll want to take the cap off and allow more airflow. But like I said, this can take place over several weeks. There is absolutely no rush. And while the cuttings are slowly rooting more and more, as they get acclimated to less humidity, that rooting will pick up its pace and it'll be seeking out moisture because it's got less humidity around the leaves. So by the time you get that humidity chamber or whatever it is off of those cuttings completely they'll be even more rooted now again your biggest friend in this whole process is going to be a spray bottle just a simple spray bottle nothing fancy about it you can go out there even the first day that you slightly crack the lid or lift the soda bottle and spritz the tops of those cuttings so that they've got moisture droplets all over them and if you cracked it just a little bit, they shouldn't lose that moisture in a fast amount of time. They should maintain it for probably hours in there. You can actually do this process, start this process on a day when you're going to be home. And you can go out there maybe three times through the day and spritz the cuttings again. That should be enough to get them over that hump. If you ever see the, wil the leaves wilting, make sure that you hit them with a little bit of a water spray just to keep that humidity level up around the leaves. So it's kind of a touchy-feely thing. There's nothing exact about this. It really, like I said, depends on the types of cuttings, the types of plants, if they're softwood, semi-hardwood, you know, hardwood, all of these different variables matter. And the more firm the wood is, the further into the season that you're rooting these cuttings, the less you're gonna have to worry about slowly acclimating them. You can acclimate them much quicker because they're hardier cuttings. If you've got softwood cuttings earlier in the season, in the springtime or early summer and those cuttings are just really just tender and they're not hardened off real well or they're coming from a plant that never really gets hardened off or an indoor plant then you will definitely want to do this more slowly and you'll probably want your water bottle to hit that with a little bit of moisture while you're going through the process of acclimating them so don't stress about it go slow if you notice that the plant's leaves are wilting or you notice any kind of a change in how the little cuttings are doing, back off. Just slow down, close a little, little bit more, spray them a little bit, get some humidity back in there, and then slow the process down. And 
maybe they're just not rooted well enough yet. Maybe they don't have enough roots to take up the moisture that they need. So something to take into consideration. Don't stress about it. Just slow down, back off. That's all. All right, there it is. So I hope that helps you guys. I know that's been a little bit of a point of contention for some of you. You've really struggled with that aspect of getting your cuttings to the next stage. Hopefully that helps. Take it one day at a time. Go slow. If you guys like this video, hit the like button. Subscribe if you want to follow along and see more of these plant propagation tips. I got it all out there for you. All right. Have a fantastic week, and I'll see you in the next video. Adios. Wait, we've got to do a plant update, and I've got just the perfect plant to update you on. All right. Can you see them yet? There they are. Those are the hydrangeas that we got from Hug Point, Oregon, right on the Highway 101, right on the coast there. We took a family vacation a few years ago and I made a video about this. I'll put a link in the description below. It was the first hydrangea video that we did, but those blooms are blooming and they're looking beautiful. I just recently posted a little reel to my Instagram of this bloom right here that was starting to come out. And it's actually, it started real blue and it's fading to a little bit of pink in there, but I must have acid soil down in there, but there it is growing awesome. I'd love to get a lot more cuttings off of this, but I absolutely love these lace cap hydrangeas. They're so gorgeous with those petals all around the center there. And they just look really peaceful in a garden. Incidentally, I do have those other hydrangeas in those videos still, but uh, that lace cap that you were just looking at are the only ones that I have continued to, or actually planted out on the property, but I've continued to grow the other hydrangeas. I just keep propagating them and putting them in new pots. And uh, I haven't planted them out yet because I'm just not sure where I want to put them. I know it's been a long time and you know, it's funny, I've got so many plans for this property and rhododendrons are taking up the majority of it, but we'll get there, don't worry. But I'm gonna go show you those right now. You see this massive trench we got going here. I'm starting a big project and we're gonna be putting in some power and phone and water and all kinds of good stuff around here for hopefully a uh, home build. Well, not hopefully, it's gonna happen. I just don't know how long it's gonna take, but um let's walk into the hoop house real quick and check this out all right back here in the back i've got those original hydrangeas that i got at uh that hidden acres nursery in oregon this these ones actually didn't come from hug point but the funny thing is i i'm not quite sure first of all why i'm getting so much uh leaching of the nitrogen on this particular one they've been fertilized really well but uh, I'll have to look into that a little bit more. For some reason, it's just not liking that particular pot of soil. The rest of them are doing it a little bit. Maybe they just need more nitrogen, but uh, I don't know what's going on in those pots. This one right here is doing really well. It's a beautiful green color. These are those mop head hydrangeas. Those are the ones I got at that hidden hidden acres nursery in uh right outside of tillamook oregon that i did in that original video as well i took the cuttings and put them right alongside the lace cap hydrangeas from hug point i also did another video of these last was it last year maybe it was the year before where i took more cuttings of the same exact plant at the same nursery several years later and these actually might be them but i still haven't planted any out now some of you've been asking I did that indoor growing of these hydrangeas, getting them all the way through the winter indoors under that light. This is that one. It grew really funky indoors under that light. And I think it's because the light that I had was an LED that was meant for fruiting uh, vegetables and crops and things like that. And the light was more red. And so it grew kind of funky, but now that it's been out here for a while, it's just growing compact and bushy and it's starting to finally put on some flowers right here so it's still doing good it's just a shorter compact robust looking little hydrangea i think what i'm going to do over the winter i'll leave these in here i'm going to up pot them probably to two gallon pots snip everything back when the leaves die back in the fall and then fertilize them real well and try to see if i can get these going better again but Anyway, there's the update on how the other variety of hydrangeas are doing from that little nursery that are 
in that same video that uh, I'll put the link down to below from like five years ago, I think it was, but there it is. All right, so there's our update. I hope you enjoyed it. Have a fantastic week, and I'll see you in the next video. Adios.